Greetings, language enthusiasts. Welcome back to English Mastery Academy. In the A1 English course lesson 5, today, we're delving into the foundation of English grammar, basic grammar structures. Understanding these key elements, including subject-verb agreement, word order, and question formation, is vital for effective communication. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced learner, mastering these structures will enhance your language skills significantly. Let's unlock the secrets of English grammar together. My dear students first let's know the importance of basic grammar structures. Basic grammar structures are the backbone of any language. They provide the framework for constructing meaningful sentences, ensuring clarity and coherence in communication. By grasping subject-verb agreement, word order, and question formation, you'll be able to convey your thoughts accurately and comprehend spoken and written English more effectively. Now, we're unraveling the mysteries of one of the fundamental aspects of English grammar, subject-verb agreement. Whether you're just starting your language journey or looking to refine your skills, understanding this crucial concept will pave the way for clearer and more accurate communication. Let's dive in. Learners let know the importance of subject-verb agreement. Subject-verb agreement ensures harmony in sentences. It's about making sure the verb matches the subject in number and person. By mastering subject-verb agreement, you avoid common mistakes and create sentences that flow naturally. Singular subjects and singular verbs. When the subject is singular, the verb must be singular too. For example, she sings beautifully. Here, sings, agrees with the singular subject, she. Plural subjects and plural verbs. Conversely, when the subject is plural, the verb must be plural as well. Example, they dance every Saturday. In this case, dance, matches the plural subject, they. Now let's see some tricky situations. Some subjects may seem plural but are singular in meaning. For instance, the team is winning. Team, although referring to multiple individuals, is considered singular in this context. Similarly, collective nouns like family or audience can be singular or plural, depending on the intended meaning. Here is a common mistake and a tip. Many learners struggle with irregular verbs like is an are or forget the s in the third person singular form. A helpful tip is to identify the subject and its number before choosing the verb form. Let's practice. Comment below with your own sentences using correct subject-verb agreement. Don't worry, practice makes perfect. Well done students. You've unlocked the mystery of subject-verb agreement. I hope this explanation caters to a wide audience, from beginners aiming to grasp the basics to advanced learners refining their language skills. Remember, it's not as complicated as it seems, with practice, it becomes second nature. Students, now let's dive deep into the core of English communication, word order. Understanding how words are structured in sentences is key to expressing ideas clearly and effectively. Whether you're starting your language journey or aiming for advanced proficiency, mastering word order will elevate your communication skills. Let's embark on this enlightening linguistic adventure together. Initially, you should know the importance of word order. Word order forms the backbone of sentence construction, it dictates how subjects, verbs, and objects are arranged to convey meaning. By mastering word order, you create sentences that are easy to follow and understand, regardless of complexity. Now we are going to learn about the subject-verb-object order. In English, the typical word order is subject-verb-object SVO, where the subject performs the action on the object. For example, she reads books. Here, she is subject reads as verb books as object. Then you should know about the modifiers and the adjectives. Modifiers like adjectives are placed before the nouns they describe. For instance, the big blue ball. Here, the is an article, big is an adjective, blue is an adjective, ball is a noun. Then, adverbs usually come after the verb but before the object. 
Look at this example, she sings beautifully. Here, she is subject sings as verb and beautifully as an adverb. Next, let's move on to the complex sentences. Understanding word order is crucial in complex sentences. For example, although she was tired, she completed her work. In this sentence, although is a subordinating conjunction, she is a subject, was as a verb, tired is an adjective, she is a subject, completed is a verb, her is a possessive pronoun, and work is object. In questions, the word order changes, such as, where did you go yesterday? In this question, where is a question word, did is an auxiliary verb, you is a subject, go is the main verb, and yesterday is the adverbial phrase. Here is a common mistaken tip. One common mistake is misplacing modifiers, leading to unclear meaning. Practice helps in recognizing the correct placement. Remember that word order can convey emphasis. Shifting words in a sentence changes the focus, allowing for nuanced communication. Let's practice together. Share your own sentences in the comments, experimenting with different word orders. Don't worry students, mistakes are part of the learning process. Fantastic job! You've mastered the art of word order in English. Beginners can grasp the basics, while advanced students can refine their understanding and create more complex sentences. Remember, practice and experimentation are your best allies in language learning. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest lessons. Lastly, we're unraveling the art of forming questions in English. Questions are the gateway to engaging conversations and understanding their structure is essential for effective communication. Whether you're a beginner starting your language journey or an advanced learner refining your skills, this video will guide you through question formation with clarity and examples. Let's dive in. Now I tell you about the importance of question formation. Questions are vital for gathering information, expressing curiosity, and initiating meaningful dialogues. Mastering question formation enhances your ability to participate actively in conversations, making your interactions more engaging and dynamic. Now learn about using the question words. Questions often start with question words like, who, what, where, when, why, and, how. These words seek specific information. Example, what is your name? Here, what is a question word, is as a verb, and your name is that subject. Next, auxiliary verbs in questions. Questions can also be formed using auxiliary verbs like, is, are, do, does, can, will, etc. Example, are they coming to the party? Here, are is auxiliary verb, they is subject, coming is the main verb to the party. Now, inversion in yes, no questions. In yes, no questions, the word order is inverted, placing the auxiliary verb before the subject. Example, did you enjoy the movie? Here, did is an auxiliary verb, you is subject, enjoy is main verb, the movie. Look at a common mistake and learn the tip. A common mistake is forgetting to invert the word order in yes, no questions, leading to unclear communication. Practice forming questions regularly, paying attention to the correct placement of question words and auxiliary verbs. Let's practice together. Feel free to share your own questions in the comments. Again I'm saying don't worry, mistakes are part of the learning process, and we're here to support each other. Fantastic job! You've unlocked the secret to forming questions in English. This explanation caters to a diverse audience, from beginners seeking foundational knowledge to advanced learners aiming for nuanced question formation. Keep practicing and remember, questions are the key to endless learning and engaging conversations. Students in this A1 course Lesson 5, you have unraveled the mysteries of one of the fundamental aspects of English grammar, subject-verb agreement, the core of English communication, word order and the art of forming questions in English. 
If you found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest lessons, and share your feedback with us. Thank you for joining us at English Mastery Academy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more enriching language lessons. Keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next class. Do you want to continue your learning? Choose any video here or visit our channel for unlimited lessons to improve your English language. Stay tuned for more enriching lessons from English Mastery Academy. Happy learning!